Okay, so someone asked me about these A30 controllers. Now I have another video already up talking about them, except for they are talking about these controllers that you can get from Wind Turbines USA on eBay and off their website, I'm sure. Uh, these things cost uh, 25 to 30 dollars a piece whenever you buy it from them. I don't do that because they're 25 to 30 dollars a piece. These are 10 or 11 dollars. It just takes two to three weeks to get them because they have to ship from China. They are identical on the inside and these controllers can handle up to like 90 volts whereas like uh, this particular one blows up if you get above 60 volts. No. Maybe those are more resilient than some other applications, but I think that these are better for what I'm doing. They are very simple controls. They read voltage off the battery, and then whenever you hit certain presets, it will send voltage out to control something. Like in this situation, I'm using this one to control these relays. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. What I don't like about this one is uh, the, the, the ones that <laughs> you order from China, the displays, they get kinda, kinda buggy, see? <laughs> I do have similar issues with the wind turbines .com or wind turbines USA ones, but nowhere near as bad. So uh, basically, what we've got is this wire here is our voltage in, reads off the DC side of this uh, rectifier, which goes to battery current, and then we've got our DC out to go and control our or solid state relays. Now, I honestly don't know what this position is for. I don't know what these jumpers are for. I just know that for this application, to use them to control these relays, that's what they're, that's what's required. I haven't seen anything that fully documents what all these boards can do and what all they're for. I've only seen documentation for using them to control relays and such circuits for, uh, you know, like, like I said, solar applications, wind turbines, things like that. Now, whenever I started this with the, my first ones, It seems almost like uh, the, the covers are touching the, the display, and that's what causes the problem. Uh, whenever I started this, probably the most complicated, silly issue that I had was trying to program them. Programming them is actually really easy. Uh, the instructions were just ridiculous. So, this button cycles through all the menu options this button changes your values. So each menu has three sec or basically three sections that, that you adjust. And it's gonna cycle through every one. The first menu is your high voltage limit. This is for a 48 volt circuit. I really, this is uh, for emergency braking. So I have it set a little bit higher than what You'd really want it set for if you were, you know, using it as a, as a as a charge controller. So I have it set at 61. Basically, you change the value with this button over here to whatever voltage you want. It'd be for that digit, that digit, and then that digit if I wanted it to come on at 61.1 volts. There you go. This is the low voltage. It's gonna be just. <laughs> I touched the cover. This is gonna be the same thing. You you cycle through and set each voltage value for what you want. I think that this is a 
a delay. I think that uh, whatever you program it to cycle at, that this is going to hold that cycle for a certain amount of time and just to keep, uh, keep it from fluttering relays. Like if you have it set to turn on at certain voltage and then off at another voltage, if it jumps back and forth real quickly, I think that that's what that menu is for. And I don't know what this menu is for. <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, the last really important one, I think. You set this up for, you turn it on on the high voltage or on on the low voltage. H is for high, low is for, I mean, L is for low. And you, you can see I set it for low and it turns my relays on. Set it for high, it turns my relays back off. Basically what this does Come on. <laughs> Whenever it hits 61.1 volts, it turns my relays on. At 55 volts, it turns the relays back off. Now, like if you change that other one to where, you know, it sets it sets the on at low voltage, then it would turn the volt turn the relays on at 55 volts and then turn them off at 61 volts. Back to the front. Now, this is an important thing to keep in mind with these relays is that the voltage going out is line voltage. That's your battery voltage. So if you are using them to control relays that have a narrow voltage or a low voltage limit, like these down here that I use are 3 to 32 volts. If you exceed that voltage, what happens is, I'll show you an example. Uh, not that one. There we go. This is what happens whenever you exceed that 32 volts. Blows up, melts the inside, flares it all up, and it'll melt through the casing. So, especially with these Fotec relays, if you exceed that voltage, they will pop. Now, up here, these are still... 32 volts, uh, which I, I don't like running on this because whenever this comes on, it comes on at 60 volts. These are a little bit better relays, but I am going to get a regulator for them. Similar to what I've got going on down here. This is the same thing. Whenever voltage comes out of the, the controller, it's battery voltage. So if this on the 24 volt circuit if voltage is spiking up into the 30s it can damage these relays so i have everything coming out of the the box going to my regulator down here and then that regulator knocks it all down to 12 volts uh, so i have 12 volts running my relays and I also use it to run the fans. Now, the guy that asked me earlier this morning about these controllers asked specifically, can they run a fan? It is what I've got. I, I don't have any specs for what these things can handle. The documentation that comes with it does not say how many amps, what voltage, or anything like that that the load circuit can handle. But... I do have one, this box right here is running all four of these relays, it's running this fan, and it's running that fan. Now, again, it's kicking out, you know, 24 to 32 volts, which this controller is knocking down to 12, so it kind of gets a little bit of an amperage increase there. But uh, let's see here. This fan is 12 volt at 1.4 amps, so 18 watts. Let's let's go heavy and say 20 watts. 
And this one is 12 at 0.6. So let's say, again, being generous, we'll say 25 watts for everything. And I don't know how many watts it takes to cycle these relays. But that's, it is running those. I would be reluctant to go much more than that without seeing the documentation. I do have a couple more of these switches coming. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll just try loading one up until it blows up so that we get an idea. Anyway, so that's that. If you guys have any questions, please post them below. Uh, if you happen to be more familiar with these switches than I do and know what those two mystery menus are for, I'd love to hear about it. I did hear some suggestions in one of my previous videos, but uh, I, I haven't been able to confirm any of them. So that's that for today, or for this project anyway. So have a nice day, guys. Thank you for watching.